I'm going to add width of 100% because that should fill out the container. And I'll save. And what just happened? Hello and welcome. Hi, I'm Dave. Today we're going to look at a common problem when you are planning a web page layout with a header and footer. And we'll take a deeper look at the CSS position property with a value of fixed. So let's get started. On the left here, I've got Visual Studio Code. On the right, I have a basic page layout with a header and a footer and a very large main area that expands the page to the full height. So let's look at how we've set this up first. I'll scroll up in the CSS and we can see the HTML element actually has a background color that's kind of gray. And that's what we see here on the left and the right of the body. And the body has a max width of 800 pixels. And even without setting the width, you can see the body element is taking up that full 800 pixels here. After that, we need to note that the body is set to display flex and the flex direction is a column. So this is the full body here. We see the HTML element on the left and the right with a different color. And the body, if we quickly look at the HTML, has a header, a main element, and a footer. So when we set the flex direction to column, that's exactly what happens. We have a column here with the header, the main element, and the footer. Back at the style CSS that we're using, now we're styling the header and the footer. And you can see we have the different background color, we have some padding, and the color of text. And that's all we have right now. And this works out great as long as the content doesn't outgrow the page. Because typically we want our header and footer to stay in place, even if there's more content here that needs to scroll. So let's look at what happens when we add more content to our HTML and see what happens to the header and the footer. So I'm going to type P and let's do times 10 and then we'll put some lorem text and then we'll have a break element times two. So this is an Emmet abbreviation. It's going to help us quickly add all of this content we need. I'll save that, scroll back over so we can see everything else. And you see how many paragraphs it added, 10. And then we have a break after each one. And you can see that represented over here in the page. But here's the problem. Our footer disappeared. Our header's still there. But now if I scroll, our header disappears. Our footer has disappeared. And so really they're static. They're not staying put though. They're, they're just static on the page and they scroll with the rest of the content. So we need to change that back in the CSS. And this is where we run into a common problem. So let's go ahead and use position on both the header and the footer. And I'm going to set it to fixed, which is the correct choice. Once we do that, we need to add top and bottom values. So let's have the header and here we'll set the header to a top of zero. And then for the footer, we'll set it to a bottom of zero. And let's go ahead and save this and see what we get. Well, now our header and footer are back in place, no matter how much content, and we can scroll the content, but look at what happened to the header and the footer. Suddenly they're not expanding to fill out the rest of the body. And of course, we haven't set a width. They were just doing that by default, which would be the default behavior, just like the body is expanding to the full 800 pixels without setting a specific width on it here. We do have the max width set though. So what is the problem? Well, when we set fixed, it's kind of like setting absolute. It's a position that takes the elements out of the flow of the page. So when we see this, what we initially wanna do is go ahead and adjust the width. So I've got my header and footer in place. I'm going to add width of 100% because that should fill out the container. And I'll save. And what just happened? Well, what happened is the element, both the header and the footer, are not in the flow of the page. Position fixed puts them relative to the viewport. Now they're inside the body, so they didn't start until after the body started. So that's why they're not over here to the left. But they went ahead and expanded 
well beyond the body then and filled out the rest of the page. And that's no good. That's not what we want at all. So how do we fix this? So let's experiment. What if we went ahead and set the max width like we did for the parent, which is the body. So the parent element has a max width of 800 pixels. And you can see that doesn't help us either. And we wouldn't really want to do that with 800 pixels either, because then if we had to make a change, we would have to change it in both places. So that's not what we want. Let's go ahead and consider this. What if we put a width of 100% again and expand those elements, but then we set a max width and let's not use 800 pixels here, so we would have to change it in two places. Let's use inherit and now save. Oh, now we have the width that we want, but it did need the 100% width here, which you could leave here, and it doesn't need to be set on the body, but you could also take the width and set it on the body because it doesn't hurt anything, and then you could also set that on the child elements, which are the header and footer in this example, to inherit as well, and we save. And this still works and still looks the same. Now you would only make changes to the body and the header and footer would follow those changes because you've set them to inherit. So this looks pretty good, except also when we use position fixed, it went ahead and took it out of the flow of the document. So we have text that is always hidden underneath the header and the footer. So now we need to come down to our main element and where we have a padding of one rim, which is top, bottom, left, and right. Let's go ahead and put the top and the bottom to 120 pixels, leave the one rim on the left and the right and see how that looks. Looks much better. So now we have some space here before the header and we can scroll. And when we get to the bottom, we have extra space at the bottom. So remember to also add some padding at the top and the bottom when you use position fixed. Now, why did I use position fixed and not position absolute? It's inside the body element and position fixed is relative to the viewport. Position absolute is relative to the parent element or the ancestor element as it's often referred to. So if we switch this to absolute, let's see what it looks like. We save. It looks the same, doesn't it? But there is one big difference. It is relative to its ancestor or parent element. So when I scroll, look what happens to the footer. That's no good. And the header too. So what we need to do is switch this back to fixed and then the header and the footer will stay put. So I hope this short CSS tutorial has helped you understand how a layout with a header, a main element for content and a footer works. Of course, I'm using display flex and putting that in a column, but this is a very common layout with a header and footer. And I hope it just saves you a little bit of time and you understand why that width 100% setting doesn't work on its own. You really need to inherit from the body and set those widths up there. I believe that is the best approach. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day and let's write more code together very soon.